Good morning. Good morning. On behalf of Isabel and her family and friends, we welcome you here to celebrate Max Ascension, meeting God face to face. Max battle days or the military and living on this world is over now. Now he is in the very presence of our Lord. Amen. Certainly as we reflect upon the memories of Max, there will be a time in our service in which you will be able to share so this gives you a little time to reflect, and certainly Isabel would love to hear, hear uh, words of thoughts and love regarding her husband, Max. I'm going to play a great hymn that Isabel requested, Max Love, How Great Thou Art. Let us pray. Our gracious, almighty God, what a mighty day today in which you have designated to celebrate Max McMill's life. Boy, his love for this great country the people of this country is insurmountable. How he laid his life in danger and yet at the same time honored you. Today is a day it's going to be filled with joy and tears, some laughter, but certainly, Max is up there with you. Max is walking the streets of gold. Certainly, his legacy is one that we need to imprint upon our hearts and realize as believers in Christ, there is a battle that we fight day in and day out. And may we be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in your work. May we not be ashamed to stand tall and proclaim the great news that Jesus Christ, the Son of God, overcame the grave and is the Savior for the world. God bless this service today. Bless Isabel and family, and as they 
reflect upon you and they reflect upon Max. May they know within their heart that someday you will call them home, call all believers home, and we will celebrate once again together. In your gracious name, I pray. Amen. Amen. As Isabel puts it, she says, Precious Max. Precious Max. Max went home to be with the Lord at the young age of 94. I'll be lucky to make 54. He passed away this past June, June 16th, 2015. And he is radiating in the very presence of the Almighty God today. No more pain. He is full of strength in which all of us have known no Max was a strong man. He may have had a frail body in the end of his life, but he was a strong man that loved to serve God, loved to serve his wife, Isabel, loved to serve country. And he did it with great pride. Okay. And so Charles Bruce Mack. Mack. Charles Bruce Mack. Very good. He is survived. He is survived by his faithful, loving wife, as I shared, for 71 years. You don't hear about that often today, do you? 71 years of being married together going through the difficult times together, strengthening each other up together, and enjoying the feast of life that God has gave them together. Isabel McMill, his brother, Dwayne McMill, his brother-in-law, Joseph Peter, and sister-in-law. Loris, George, and many nieces and nephews in the international family tree. By all means, Isabel had a large family. And of course, her extended family is you here today. She loves you very much, and she's excited that you chose to spend the day celebrating a man that loved God and loved her. This young spirit brought to life in February 12, 1921. That's a couple days ago when Max was born. He's born in Indiana. He knew a lot about horticulture. He knew a lot about farming and his legacy precedes him as a very godly man that was raised in a family that put God first. He also trained up his offspring to fear and to honor, taught them how to work by the sweat of their brow. But once again, he comes down to the basis that God is all that he needs and that God loves people very much. Mac Charles Bruce McMail was able to stand on his own and served the war effort, World War II in 1943. 
to August of 1945, and again in 1947 through 51. I used to watch these old military clips when I was young, and I still watch them today. And I see these Liberty boats, American ships. Max was one of those men on those boats. Like many of our military men, they received attack over and over again, but yet the Almighty God chose to keep Max safe, bring him back to his lovely wife, Isabel. He would visit over 11 different ports, as well as the Great Lakes, contributing as a merchant marine, followed by service in the Army, earning honorable discharge. He received numerous awards. And after the service, you can go to the foyer and there's all his service award medals are there. Take a few minutes to look at them and see what this mighty man did for his country. Max, what a powerful man he was. Now he's in the presence of God. When I first met Max here at Bible Baptist Church, I saw Isabel. Isabel comes walking up the aisle here. And she came to a couple of our services. And uh, I discovered what a passion these two precious people had to serve other people. She needed storage room to give stuff away to the homeless, to feed people over there at different um, locations, Sky Harbor Airport Inn. Some of you are here today, and that's a special blessing for Isabel. But she had a passion, still does today. Sometimes I pick up the phone and I say, Isabel! I need diapers or I need some food for a family. Never once did Isabel and Max not come through. As I think of Max, I think about many of his jokes. He was a merchant marine and one of his jokes if I may, I can pick up this hat here. It was about this hat. About this hat here. He says, Pastor Jim, you know what this means, combat veteran? I said, I assume you went to war, man. He says, no, it was living with Isabel for 71 years. I said, oh my goodness. I said to myself, Mac, you're living dangerous. You don't have to worry about the U-boats. You got Isabel. <laughs> yes. Yeah. But he was always telling a joke. They'd always sit in the very back of the church because they had a hard time walking many times. That was their space way back there where Mike is. And, but every Sunday, during Greek time, I'd walk back there and greet Isabel and Max and the people that she would bring with her. So it's always been a joy to know Isabel. And if you know Isabel, she's a strong driver. And she loves to do God's ministry. If she says, if I say, I don't think that's possible, Isabel, she says, the all pastor, it is. It's possible. And sure enough, come through. So, in a moment, we are going to uh, give you time. So I know many of you have great reflection 
about Isabella Max. You can't separate the two. There's no way. And they are a unit, and they still are, and someday God will restore their marriage together again in heaven. We are going to read out of God's Word, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 50 through 57. One of the passages that Mac and I studied and read together one time at one of his visitations when I went there late at night. It says, What am I saying, dear brothers and sisters, is that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. These perishable bodies of ours are, no, are not able to live forever. Max knew that. He knew his tent was starting to get a little old. But he knew he was on his route to be with Jesus in heaven forever. He says, but let me tell you a wonderful secret God has revealed to us. Not all of us will die, but we will all be transformed. It will happen in a moment, in the blinking of an eye, when that last trumpet is blown, for when the trumpet sounds, God's trumpet, the Christians who have died will be raised with transformed bodies, and then we who are living will be transformed into heavenly bodies that will never die. That is hope. Amen? Amen. That is hope. Amen. It's a promise from God. If you are a believer in Christ, absence of the body is to be present with the Lord. That's where Max is. He's celebrating with God. Certainly if there's Anybody here, whether you're young or old, Max would want me to say, and Isabel would want me to share with you, that there is hope found in Jesus Christ alone. No one else. What a legacy and honorarium to him. Today, if you're here and you want to know Christ is your Savior, and at the end of the service, I'd love the opportunity to share with you. The simple, if you confess with your mouth and believe with your heart that Jesus Christ is Lord, God's Word says, you're going to be saved. You're going to be saved. Goes on and says, when this happens, when our perishable earthly bodies have been transformed into heavenly bodies that will never die, then at Last, the scriptures will come to me. It says, death is swallowed up with victory. Max knew what victory was all about. He laid his life on the line for our country. But he knew victory was found in Christ and Christ alone. Death has no sting, has no control, as long as you put your trust and your faith in the Almighty God. At this time, I'm going to invite Tony up, a special friend of Max and Isabel. He's going to sing a song in the garden, a powerful song. Tony. As you come up, he, is, he shared with me that he's known Max and Isabel, what, seven years? Yeah. Seven years. And certainly, we're privileged to have you here at Bible Baptist Church to minister to our hearts today. Yeah. 
That's one of Mac's favorites in the garden. I come to the garden alone while the dew is still on the roses and the voice I hear falling on my ear the Son of God discloses and he walks with me and he talks with me and he tells me I am his very own and the joy we share as we tarry there none other has ever known and he speaks and the sound of his voice is so sweet the birds hush their singing and the melody that he brings to me within my heart is ringing and he walks with me and he talks with me and he tells me I am his own and the joy we share as we tarry there none other has ever known Amen well, Max is walking in God's garden now. Amen? All right. Thank you for sharing with us, Tony. What a blessing that is. Well, today, I'm going to share a short message. You come here on Sundays, some of them aren't so short. <laughs> but this one's going to be shorter. And then I'll let... Uh, talk about what it is to be in God's military army. Can it be more ironic than reflecting upon Mac who served his country with great pride he had a great love for America. He spent six, seven years in our country serving us faithfully on the battlefield. From shore to shore, he served. He valued freedom. He let freedom ring. Yet, so many of his comrades laid down their lives for us to experience that freedom that we enjoy today. You see, Max defended our rights to live as individuals. He put great value on life. But bravely did he ready himself to die in the mid-40s during World War II. 
in service of this great country. Tom Brokaw. I looked up a quote that I thought he made, and he did. He was not exaggerating when he called those who served during World War II the greatest generation. The greatest generation. Like so many, Max, Bruce, however you prefer, quietly served our country. He looked for his battle buddies. He managed to survive untold horrors of the war. Max returned as a bona fide hero. The last couple years, on Veterans Day, we had the privilege of hearing his story, how he served our country. What a blessing that was to hear from him. In the back foyer, as I noted already, you can see the hero's medals. And he didn't brag about them, he was humble. Humbled man that loved to serve people. Now we take those concepts that made his character great. You look in the Bible. Oftentimes you find God is called the Lord of hosts. This word host means armies. Means armies. God is our heavenly commander. Jesus had the encounter with a soldier. A Roman centurion who asked him to heal a servant. Jesus said he had not seen such a faith in all of Israel. It's a rare gem and a rare find to find a man in all of America like Max. I like to think that soldiers are especially capable of trusting their chain of command. I've seen foxholes of faith through Isabel and her husband Max. I've also seen lasting trust in the Almighty God that prevails throughout the years in times of great difficulty, great strife, but also the blessing of seeing how God has blessed him during the great times when he had peace in his heart. Several times, I'd go up and visit Max at the VA in the last several months. I see his precious Isabel by his side. In fact, they're very rare did I not see Isabel with Max when they would be driving food, dropping them off here, and going all over the city of Phoenix. They were always together. Always together. Trust in God. What a great picture that is for marriage today. Those here who have spent time in military service, they have an uncomfortable life. At times we begin to think that being miserable is part of the mission. Field duty is usually an ordeal. Eating sea rations. And I've eaten those. My dad was in the army. <clears throat> he used to go deer hunting with my dad, and he'd bring those nasty tasting sea rations. And I said to myself, what happened to McDonald's right around the corner, Dad? 
I think people call them MREs, is that correct? All you military guys, you gotta correct me if I'm wrong. Cleaning weapons, every day I'm sure they would be cleaning their weapons multiple times because they relied upon it for their safety. They would brave the harsh elements. They would be up hour after hour. The great Apostle Paul, I don't believe he ever served in the military. But as a tent maker, he knew. <laughs> he knew what it was like to live a nomadic lifestyle under harsh conditions. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5, it talks about awaiting the new body. For we know that if the earthly tent we live in, if it is destroyed, we have a building from the Almighty God, an internal house in heaven, not built by human hands. Meanwhile, we groan, longing to be clothed instead with our heavenly dwelling. Because when we are clothed, we are not found naked. We know that when this tent that we live in is taken down, this tent is folded up, when we die and we leave these finite bodies, we will have a wonderful resurrected body. Body located in heaven. Located in heaven. Not made by Pastor Jim. It's not made by Isabel or Mac. It is made by the Almighty God. Guess what? Max is never going to have to relocate. He's in heaven forever. Our new homes will be yours and mine forever. We know Christ is our personal Savior. I've done many funerals. I just did one yesterday. This funeral here is a grand time of celebration. Funeral yesterday was on a more of a somber note. Because I know in my bottom of my heart that Max is walking with God right now. You know, for troops that are deployed. I got many military people. If you've been in the military, raise your hand. All through the room here. For troops on deployment, the tent becomes home sweet home, doesn't it? It's all part of the military duty. But no one lives permanently in a tent. Amen. It may certainly seem that way. I'm sure Matt looked at that way and I wonder if whenever he was going to get out of the war and the war was going to come to an end. But the truth of the matter is this, that in the end of every field, exercise soldiers returning to their barracks, returning to their quarters, not a GP medium. This is exactly the word picture Paul here is presenting to you and I today. Paul is presenting, Paul is saying that our bodies are a lot like a tent. Temporary. Yes. Amen. They provide you and I a place to live, Amen. raise our children, yes. enjoy them play sports, enjoy watching them graduate from high school, yes. go on to college. Amen. But our homes are temporary. <laughs> they provide us a place to live. <clears throat> but only for a brief portion of yours and my existence. 
Like the canvas of a tent, our flesh is just a temporary structure. Paul's idea of death is breaking down a tent, rolling it up, folding it up, in preparation for moving into a permanent facility. And at the end of life, we can add these words to Max's obituary, to be continued. Amen. There is more to come. Amen? Yes. More to come. Our Lord Jesus Christ. He assured his disciples that this eternal structure was in the process of being built up. In John's Gospel, John chapter 14, he offers these comforting words. He says, In my Father's house are many what? Mansions. Mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I am going to prepare a place for you. Goes on and says, There are plenty of room. In the meantime, Jesus is preparing for you and I. Yes. He's getting our rooms ready. Are you ready to meet him? Yes. I trust that you are. So when soldiers, when they're on the maneuver, what do you think soldiers talk about? They talk about how they can't wait to get back home. At least one of their talks. How glad they'll be back to get back into the real world. The misery that they experience, the hardships that they experience, troops endure, making homecoming a very sweet, sweet thing. Our problem is that we often think the tent we're living in is in the real world. But it's not. Come on now. What we are experiencing is but a shadow of reality. We hope to move from the shadow lands of, of life someday to encounter the reality is all with all its fullness being with Jesus. God does offer us the confidence of assurance. That when our earthly existence is over. Mm. Matt breathed his last breath on his earthly ex existence. A few days ago. We will leave. He left his tent. And he is going to dwell forever. In the permanent home that God has made for him. This is life is the only life that. We don't. But there's another life coming. You see, death is merely a transition. It's like getting orders for a brand new assignment. He received God's order and said, Matt, come be with me, the good and faithful servant. The rest of us here who are left, that's you and I, we're left with some sorrow in our hearts at the passing of, Matt, uh, of Max. But we find comfort in the certainty of reunion and rest with him. We who remain, we may grieve, but we grieve with great hope. Amen? Amen. We have hope. Every one of us here today, yes. Lord, you matter to God, yes. and he loves you very much, yes. just like he loves Max. Yes. He loves all of you. Lord, we got some young people here. Hallelujah. I would encourage you, whatever you do in life, you put God first. Huh. Yes. First. Yes. You don't let the things in this world 
bring you down. Some of you may serve our country, but you serve with integrity, knowing that God is directing your walk. I know our young people on summer vacation. We got several here today. But as you're enjoying your brevity of vacation, I hate to tell you it's short, school's coming again. But spend your time. <laughs> spend your time preparing your spiritual walk when you get ready to walk your high school hallways. Because Satan is going to try to bring you down. You need to say no to drinking. No to sexual activity. No for stealing. But say yes to God. And then you can become a mighty man right back to you. Amen? So God does offer us great confidence. We will leave earth someday. God says to be absent of the body is to be present with him. There's another life coming. Yes. Death is merely transitional. May God's promises be the very measure of your hope. The measure of your hope. Let us pray. And I'm going to ask you to pray with your heads bowed. And as I pray, if there's anybody here that would love to know Christ is your personal Savior, yes. I would encourage you to either look up or lift your hand up, and I'll be happy to meet with you to share how, if you confess with your mouth and believe with the Lord, that Jesus Christ is Lord, you'll be saved. So let us pray together. Almighty God. Oh, we thank you for this time together, together, today. Thank you for Max's life story. A man that loved you with his whole heart. I pray today that if there's somebody here that would like to know Max is God, which is the only true God. I'd like to just raise your hand real quick, not to embarrass you. Thank you, thank you. All right. And at the end of the service, I'll be standing up here. You can come by, and I'd love to pray with you and take you to another room. Praise God. Amen? Amen. God, you're a mighty God. We just thank you for the service. We thank you for the opportunity to gather together and praise a man that lived life well. God, as we come prepared for this service to share some of the life-touching stories that Max has made in our lives, may we understand that ultimately, you, you are the one that is the Savior. You are a Redeemer. You are the mighty God. And someday when you blow your trumpet, the perfect trumpet, to be absent of the, in a twinkling of an eye, we will be in your presence. In your gracious name I pray. Amen. Okay, the... This is a portion of the service. I got a mic up here. And you don't have to come up here, but if you'd like to share something about Max's life, please stand. You can, if you've got a loud voice, you can just share from where you're at or walk up to the mic here and, uh, and use it. But anybody? Come on up here. I know you got a loud voice. Good morning, people. My name's Corey. 
Um, I spent a lot of time with Mac and Isabel. Um, when I was going through my health issues, Mac and Isabel were one of the only people that come to visit me, and he always had his jokes. Whenever, I, whenever he see me, for some reason, I don't know if it was directed at me, but he always said, why were the Native Americans here first? And I'm like, okay, why? And he said, because they had reservations. <laughs> that was Mac, always making you laugh. <laughs> but um, I, had, I told my priest about this this weekend, and at Father's Day Mass, he acknowledged him, and we all prayed for him, Isabel. So on behalf of South Mountain, I mean, on, on behalf of Our Lady of Quito, Roman Catholic Church at South Mountain, um, they send their prayers and blessings. And he will be missed. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. This is a celebration. This is our say, go on, be with the Lord. Uh, my name is Sister Kimberly Blanton. And on behalf of Daughters of Thunder, I met Matt um, when I started working with Mother Isabel back in 2009. Yes, yes ma'am. And I can tell you I was so honored to meet a man of God of integrity. There's no doubt in my mind I celebrate. I want to get where I want to be like him when I grow up. Amen. When you know that you know that, that a person lives the word of God and they're okay with God. That's why it's not sad. But he will be missed. And his legacy of supporting his wife and the world the work that you've done can never be touched or thought of. Glory to God. And you know, and I thank God for whole life in you, Mother. Yeah. And we're going to keep on pushing, keep on pushing. But I do want to sing this song to encourage you. We have come this far by faith, leaning on the Lord. Trusting in his holy word, he never failed me yet. And we're singing, oh, 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 can't turn around. We've come this far by faith. Hallelujah. Love you, mother. Praise Jesus. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you. My name is Rosie Luciana, and I'm born again. I'm saved here with the Thank God for uh, Isabel and her husband yes. in the same context. Yes. And we went, I went to uh, mention to them many times. And we had a good time. Is Isabel and I sung song together <laughs> at one of the ministry. I thank God for her labor because she put she didn't only talk, but she lived, she they lived, he lived in unity. Where it rained or shine, they was on the battlefield for the Lord. And you don't see many people doing that nowadays. They preach to us in the house of God, but they never go beside the four walls. And thus, of one highway of heaven compelled them to come. But it seemed like to me, we talk when we ain't walking the walk. Praise the Lord. Amen. God loves us all the same, yes, yeah. equally. Yes, and then they want, they want us to repent and live holy yeah. and love one another. Praise the Lord. Yes. For God is alive today forever. Yes. And I thank God for being here. And he was a dear man. He got away from my husband. My husband was a preacher, and the week, he, he, I got I almost to set out. But he was a dear man of God. They're dear people of God. I really love him. I love from the heart, not from the mouth. Yeah. Praise the yeah. Lord. Yeah. So he, he come, we live on second floor. They live on first floor. So we be meeting people. Oh, this man, a joke. Yeah. <laughs> but he lives his life. Praise the Lord. It's not like, the kind of person he were. He was a person that you love to be around. He had the true love of God in his heart. He wasn't fake. 
Praise the Lord. Yes. We are yes. glad to we're glad to be to be them and be with them and uh, and I love them dearly. So y'all, thank you. Give me this. I would sing, but I ain't gonna sing because the Lord might take over. Praise the Lord. <laughs> First Presbyterian church, so they came over to uh, see us because we were a refugee and we came to America and they came. So I'm seeing my heart carrying a big box of diaper because my daughter, she was uh, nine months and uh, I was pregnant. So I'm trying to open the door and I'm like, I, I, I don't speak English, so I start looking at him <laughs> and he's scared. <laughs> he he keep like, can you open the door? I'm coming in. <laughs> <laughs> and almost when he came, he will do this. And we're like, what the? And he said, I don't know. But the other one is coming. And we're like, okay. So my kids, they never been in a funeral. They were telling me, we're going to see him dead. And I'm like, yes, we're going to see them and say bye to Mark. Always, he used to tell me dogs, and he would tell me that. I'm going to tell you sacred in your ears. But you do not whisper because I can't hear you. But Isabel, she can hear you. So always, he tell us jokes. They would come over and pray for us all the time with my kids. They're the only people they visit us a lot to pray for us. And when we need anything, just I would call Isabel every Christmas. They have present for my kids, and they have to be with us every Christmas dinner. They're with us. We're gonna miss him. 
and he's really special in my heart. Can I miss it? Hello, everybody. Hi. How you doing today? Pretty good? Well, right, right, right. It's nice out here. Sometimes we tend to forget that, and I love that about him, because he always, always helps us remember that. That's why I think, honestly, everybody loved his jokes. Yes. Yes. I, um, I got to meet Matt when I had moved back from California, and my mom had came to me and was like, Andre, there's, a, there's these awesome people that I want you to meet. I want you to help them out. You know, there's a lot of things they do in the ministry, and I was like, First, mom, I'm trying to get a job, I'm trying to do this, you know. She was like, no, no, no. You remember, put God's work first, and he'll take care of yours. So I was like, all right, mom. Without murmuring and complaining, I'm going to do this. And after that, like, our life, like, my life shifted in a major way, in a lot of ways. And every time I got to see him, he, he would always come up to me and tell me, hey, you want to hear a joke? I'm like, yeah. <laughs> and uh, we would always keep each other company because there would be moments when my mom and Mother Isabel would be talking. We'd both be sitting there like, man, we wish we could go somewhere and do something. <laughs> he was so awesome. I mean, I think honestly why everybody feels like they feel about him because he, he was, in a sense, a good representation of what light is like, what life is like. Sometimes we tend to forget because of all these conditions around us, and they're really they're really temporary. They're really temporary. Even the moment that we're sharing right now is temporary. But I didn't come to say goodbye. I came to say see you later. Yes. Yeah. Mom, you've always been great to us. Without you, I don't even know where my mom would be right now. Really, I don't. And uh, I've been, I've been uh, after. I mean, I was at work when I heard this, you know. So like, it's like, nah, mom, you gotta be messing with me, you know. <laughs> but um, after hearing it and everything, there's a fundraiser that I do want to do to help support everything as far as what's coming up with whole life. And I'm not gonna stop. This is just gonna make me work even harder. Right. Work even harder. I'm gonna miss you, buddy. I wish I got here a little bit earlier, at least a couple of days earlier. But there ain't no such thing as late. God's always on time. Amen. Always on time. Thank you. There's a song that comes to my mind as we celebrate Mag, and the name of it is Keep on the Firing Line. Have you guys heard that song before? It says, We must fight. Be brave against all evil. Never run, nor even lie behind. If you would win for God and the right, just keep on the firing line. And it says, God will never use the soldiers he can't trust. Keep on the firing line. If you would win, my brother, surely you must fight. Keep on the firing line. There are, never, there are many dangers that we almost face. If we die of fighting, it is no disgrace. Cowards in the service will not find a place, so keep on the firing line. And we know that Brother Meg did that. He did it for God and his country. And we thank him for Isabel and Meg for being fervent in the house of the Lord. Yes, sir. Yes. Some of the people here are concerned. I've uh, not known Mac as long, but uh, I've known him for about six years. Uh, I met him when uh, they uh, came over to do the uh, food distribution at Sky Harbor Inn, and then we had a, a Bible study afterwards. Uh, what I know about Mac is uh, that uh, he was always a young man. Uh, I know that he was a veteran. He served his country well, and. Uh, and he would he would always uh, for the best of everything. Pope Isabel and Mac always for the best of everything uh, over there and uh, tried to help as many people as they could. 
they helped me out with some glasses and uh, shoes and they helped many people with this high hopper in that uh, needed the help just like so many other people at other various locations. Uh, they help people with high hopper in and they uh, uh, like better for a lot of them over there. One thing I didn't uh, hear anything about, but uh, I remember that Matt told me once that uh, uh, toward the end uh, that uh, he said that he felt that uh, uh, he was like a prison in his body. He was getting very off and he was getting, uh, uh, I guess, his body was wearing out. And uh, um, he was very, very, looking very, very forward to meeting God in person when he was finished on this earth. So uh, I really feel that uh, now he has the opportunity now and he's uh, with God. He's out of that frail body that's been hurting him and uh, causing pain for at least the last two or three years. And of course he had jokes too uh, when he talked about it in Harbor, but now, you know, now he's free. Yes. He's free. He can, uh, he's with God and join Kevin up there, and that's what we all want to do when our time comes around. So, uh, this is so great. But Matt, uh, his life, and uh, all he did to serve his country, and uh, now he's free, he doesn't have to worry about the pain in his body. So, thank God for that. <laughs> Reverend Gail Carter, thank God for the word this morning about this body being a tent and other things you said in the invitation for others to receive Christ. There's a script in the Bible that I don't think many people understand, and it says, Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. We wonder why that is so, because God could have left him here, but I believe since we're part of God, part of God's DNA, we're sparks of divinity. He loves it when we get closer to him. And so Mac is the, has the ultimate, you know, victory of being close to God. And that's probably one reason why it's precious in the sight of the Lord, the death of his saints. And um, one thing that I noticed about um, the brother, that at Ninth Avenue in Fillmore, when Isabel and her husband worked with the homeless, he had the spirit of a meek, the, like the Bible says, a meek and a quiet spirit. And Jesus said of himself, he said that, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. And he went on to say that he is meek and lowly in heart. Jesus said this of himself. And he said, you will find rest to your souls if you come to him. And one of the fruit of the spirit is meekness. And that's what I noticed in the brother here and in his wife. And what touched me about Isabel, she, when she helped the homeless, she did it out of a meek and quiet spirit and love. And one thing that was, um, might be a little humorous, but maybe it's not, when a lot of the sandwiches at Ninth Avenue and uh, Fillmore disappeared all at once, she scolded them in a quiet love. She didn't rant and rage and beat the table, but she did it in love. I don't know if she remembers that. But, and, but she would give them a little offering. You know, they would line up and she would give them all a little offering to use Amen. for whatever purpose they needed. So God bless you, Isabel. Remember, God is with you. He said he'll Amen. never leave you nor Amen. forsake you. Good morning. My name is Bill Kime, and I know uh, I have known Isabel and Matt through an organization called the Desert Mariners, and all of the Desert Mariners are World War II veterans of the Merchant Marine, Aww. and there's a certain inescapable bond I think between the men who have served uh, our country as Mac has, and for those of you who don't know, Mac's a hero. He served in the longest, deadliest battle of World War II, the battle for the control of the North Atlantic. And had we lost that battle, there wouldn't have been a, people in Europe would be speaking German today. But Mac was a hero, and when I tell the members of the organization in September 
that Mac has crossed the bar, there'll be a sadness that hard to explain. But the table that Mac and Isabel sat in at all the meetings is is going to be vacant, and it's as though a light in, in our group has gone out. Um, I'm not very good with words, but there was a poem written called Sea Fever by John Maysfield, who was a Pope Laureate of England at the time. And, uh, and maybe you know it. it, it starts out, I must go down to the sea again, to the lonely sea in the sky, and all I ask is a tall ship and a star to steer her by. Well, there's a number of verses, and the very last one says, all I ask is a jolly yarn from a laughing fellow rover and a quiet sleep and a peaceful dream when the long trick is over. Mac was the man who gave us the jolly tale and he, he was a friend. And to Mac, uh, your long trick is over. You deserve a quiet peace and a sleepful dream. Thank you. Uh, good morning, everybody. Good morning. I just want to say thank you to Isabel. And uh, I'm so glad that one day God uh, put you guys on my way. And uh, there are so many things I want to say, but my English is not so perfect. But uh, thank you very much. And like uh, this man said, uh, we're not saying goodbye. We're saying I'll see you later. Right. Because uh, Everybody that has uh, the Lord on his, on his heart, we know that we, when, one day we're gonna see each other yeah. in the place of the Lord. Yes. And uh, thank you, Isabel, in the name of my family, my father, my mom. Uh, we are so thankful to know you. And we know that God is with you. And he's giving you the strength. Thank you very much. The first time I ever met Isabel was a Sunday after service when I came here. We went to her house afterward. Ever since then, she's been there, and I've been there for her and for Mac. The biggest thing Mac always argued about was the way the nurses put his head on his head. They'd just pop it on his head, and he'd get all mad and take it off and put it on the right way. But he was always joking about his hat because he'd always wear his hat all his meals. And he'd get mad when the nurses just put it on his head and he'd take it off and put it on the right way and he'd always make a joke about it. It was always funny. And for a man that I just met only a few months ago has a very, very good heart. And so does Isabel and I love her very much. I'm going to keep this real short and sweet. Uh, I met Isabel and Mr. Mack back in 2013 when I lost my mother. I went to drinking school and ran out of gas and I was, I called the number off the human services sheet and guess who showed up? Mama. Those two. And I've been dealing with them ever since. So she's been instrumental in my development and the pastor and, and Miss Barbara, they like family. So. I just want to say, old soldiers, somebody said, old soldiers never die, they just fade away, but Max and I are going to fade away. That spirit's always going to be there, everybody's going to be there. Aww. Um, we want to thank God for uh, Isabel and Mac. Uh, we are very blessed to have them in our life. I went to Whole Life Foundation when I was 12 years old. They opened the door for us to give us home, food, and I'm very blessed. They, they are example for everybody. And we always, it was always a blessing and a joy to be with them. Yes. They always was laughing, joking, they, um, 
give us a lot of simple in our um, marriage. <laughs> this world needs more people like them. Yeah. We are really going to miss Mac because yeah, yeah. we need people like them today yeah. to give our generations an example of life, yeah. of purity, hope, and we want to be like them, yes. helping, yeah. supporting um, other marriages, other families. So we take that legacy and we're going to oh. go step by step helping other people oh. around us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, everybody. Uh, uh, my name is Cesar. I'm Gloria's husband. And uh, I'm very uh, thankful for this couple that uh, they always they always go like a little bit forward on everything. They're not only giving money to the, uh, the helpless or the, the less fortunate, but they're giving the, their life. Yes. And uh, for us, they're a very good example that we want to follow. We want to be like them, just like the Bible say, love the neighbor. That's the same thing we want to do. But when we hear this, we want to, say, we want to tell you that we love you and you're a part of our family. We have a big family. I mean, Mac is only, he just go first. We're going to go later to the same place. But we're here to support you. We're here if you need anything. We're here. Uh, one of the things remarkable in this couple is uh, I never seen Isabel like getting upset. I never seen Isabel like complaining about life, complaining about anything. I always saw not only on she but on my too, like a big smile on their faces, and that that only that means a lot because they say we are here. It doesn't matter what what's around us. We always want to be here. So uh, we just want to say we love you, uh, Isabel, and thank you for everything because we all remember everything that you do for us, like a Christmas present every year, thinking that we might forget, you always be there for us. And it's not the present, but it's you know, the, the action, what means a lot to us. So thank you very much. Aww. Thank you. I would like to say something, but here I have a big voice, so I think you can hear me. We, um, my, both my husband and I, have always been churchgoers since childhood. He's been a Presbyterian since he was five years old and he's 90. And we believed in tithing and giving to our church. And we heard about this ministry called Whole Life. And the lady who did this ministry would serve people, whether they smelled or yes. whether they did drugs or they drank. Whatever their problem was, she took care of them, and she never judged them. And we heard that um, she needed help, and we thought, now, we already give so much. Can we give more to support her? And we remembered the scripture when Jesus says to Peter, Peter, do you love me? He said, yes. And Jesus said, feed my sheep. And again... Peter, do you love me? Feed my sheep. Mm. And so we met the incarnation of that feed my sheep. Aww. Who never judged anyone, but just gave everything she had. And so it's been such a joy to support her in her ministry, walk alongside with her, deliver meals, all kinds of things through the years, and see the people here today that honor and love these two. Yes, thank you. Thank you. My name is Daniel, and um, like my brother and my sister, um, I too came to whole life with my family. And I want to say thank you, Isabel, for everything you've done for us, for our family. Uh, you gave us a place to live, uh, somewhere for us to be able to grow up and dream. I have a lot of memories in that place. That's the place where I actually learned to speak English, where I learned my first words. Uh, I still remember my first word was cake. 
Uh, they were offering me cake, and I didn't know what, it, what they were trying to say, but I knew that that was a cake, so I figured that it, it, it meant cake. Uh, yeah, so thank you very much for everything. Um, she's a real blessing, and I know your husband. Both of you are one, so both of you did your ministry together. Um, I still remember the time they sold my vehicle, and um, along with another man, he was going to sell his vehicle, and, and Isabel, I believe, talked to him, and they ended up giving me that car that was supposed to be sold. Uh, I thank you for everything you've done. And God bless you. And may He give you strength always. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Edward Cahill. I first came to Phoenix about 28 years ago. And I quickly fell on hard times. I lost my truck. And I lost my job. And lost my apartment. So we're up nowhere else to turn. I went to the VA. Because I'm a veteran. And they sent me to Whole Life. Where I met. Mac and Isabel. And uh, that was the beginning of a new chapter of my life here in Phoenix. And I got to know Mac real well as a veteran and as a person. And I believe that he was a very honorable, decent man, a man who I looked up to. And he was very faithful to his wife and to his faith. And I just want to pay my respects to one of the last of the uh, greatest generation as one veteran to another. Aww. Aww. <laughs> my mom, and goodbye to my dad, but see you later is more important because there's never goodbye. I came to Phoenix almost a couple decades ago now, and for the last better than half a decade, I met my mom and dad that I haven't had for such a long time, I can't even remember. And I turned to the vet, and they turned me away for one other, some odd reason or another, as a past veteran, and nowhere to go, nobody to turn to, not any attention from any source until I met mom and dad. Wow. The saints and angels of Phoenix. Yes. 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 On the same parallel, I put my mom and dad as Mother Teresa was to the world. They should have known mom and dad too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and they will as soon as they meet him and meet mom too. And mom, you are the everlasting example that will never be forgotten in all of Phoenix and all of Arizona and all of the world with us in our hearts always. And I love you. In, in the words of my dad, he, he had a funny one. One of the one of the his favorites was the three major <laughs> sources of communication was telegraph. Telephone and tell a woman. Tell a woman. <laughs> after his, his beloved mother. And, uh, God bless you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Yeah, my name's Rodney, and it's a privilege to be here. I've known Mac and Isabel for. 30 years, the two most selfless people I know, I don't know anybody who personifies the teaching of Christ better than they do. Uh, back in the 1980s, they started a ministry, you might say, Whole Life International Foundation, and it ran for a good 20 years, and they had 30 uh, community uh, over on 15th Avenue in Bandura, 
uh, old apartments that they converted to homeless shelters. And somewhere between 10 and 15,000 people came into those shelters, their lives were transformed. Isabel got them off drugs, got them off the street, got them off alcohol, got them jobs, and moved them back into the mainstream of society. And several years ago, I was up in North Phoenix just at a restaurant, and somebody came over to me and said, we've seen you down a whole life. And they gave me their heartfelt story as to how Isabel and Mac had transformed their lives and got them back on their feet again. And they were forever, forever grateful. And Mac leaves behind an incredible legacy. I'm sure he got a huge welcome in heaven. Yes. And he's lived a remarkable life. God bless him, I love him, and Isabel. And it's a privilege to be here and to know the two of you and to be part of that. Amen. Amen. Hi, my name is Lily G. And because of uh, Rodney, I know Isabel. We know each other almost 20 years. And uh, we're kind of a little bit parallel. Uh, I started writing about her and really realizing what Isabel is all about. And uh, it was on Valentine's Day, Fillmore, that church. And I wasn't even paying attention to what was going on in the church. Her energy inspired me to write about her. And uh, I said, Isabel, the face of humanity and love. Isabel presents love. Isabel, love is every day for her not just on Valentine's Day. Her Aww. face is the expression of love. Her life actions is love yeah. and going on. <laughs> so Isabel uh, has been a big uh, energy field in my life. My mother just passed on and she called her Madame Isabel mm -hmm. because she had the highest respect of her and I come from Europe. And so we had a little bit of connection coming from another country to see there's not everything right here, what should be, especially when it comes to people that are unfortunate. <coughs> I don't like the word homeless. I just want to call them that just in transition to go to a better life, to step up actually, and get out of you know that rat that they're on. Just a job doesn't mean that you have a life because this is a job for life with Isabel and Mac chose. So this is not about Isabel. I know this is about Mac, but she is the one with us right now. And I, I see that now how I have to be the strength for my dad. You know, because my mother, she's a, a queen. She's the rainbow. She was always talking about rainbows. And so Isabel is absolutely a rainbow. And Mac was the energy field that she could actually do you know, the job as you say, for God yeah. or for life. So Aww. Mac and Isabel, they, they are just one. They're the oneness in my family. Thank you. All right, thank you. So David, her grandson, her God grandson, God. godson, excuse me, is going to spin Isabel around in her little vehicle. Aww. We're all going to stand up and we're going to tell Isabel thank you and that we love her and that we're praying for her. Oh, Mama. All right. Isabel, we love you. Everybody say that. Isabel, we love you. Isabel, we say thank you. We say thank you. And God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Well, remain standing. I'm going to play a song, Amazing Grace, and then I'm going to ask you to join and sing a couple verses that you can find in the back of your program. Amazing Grace. This is for Charles Bruce. Big <laughs> Ben.
sing along with me, Amazing Grace. Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I was, 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 but now I am found, was blind, but now. someday. God, we just thank you for the legacy, how Max has passed on the baton to all of us to run the race, because victory is ours through your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. In your gracious and holy name I pray, amen. amen. A couple of announcements before we are dismissed, and in a minute, the... Um, the um, Oh, niece and nephew, Pastor. She wants her. Niece and nephew. She loves niece and nephew? Niece and nephew to come up. Okay. Where's the niece and nephew at? The niece and nephew isn't us. I don't know. I think it's like you guys. Yeah, what? Talk to us. Yes. We're right here. She wanted you to come up. We're right here. All the books are right here. Make sure he calls.